Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We are continuing the series of Spark plus PySpark. Today we are going to discuss some of the important topics of Spark core. Let's get started. Spark RDD. RDD stands for Resilient Distributed Dataset. Let's break this thing and understand what exactly this RDD is. First thing is Resilient. Resilient means it has a feature known as resiliency means fault tolerance feature fault tolerance means let's suppose if you are working on a cluster and you have four nodes in if in case any of the node is getting failed this RDD will recover quickly and the complete process will not be failed for now just understand if you are working on a cluster and if any of the node is getting failed your complete cluster will not fail this is something which we say fault tolerance feature or resiliency feature second thing is distributed so distributed is something which we can say your data will reside on multiple nodes as we discuss in our big data playlist we have one date we have some data and we were dividing that data into blocks and each block is going to some node so that is something which we say data resides on multiple nodes third thing is data set data set is nothing but it represents record of data so now you can say RDD is resilient distributed data set. So it is nothing but it is a fundamental data structure of Spark. RDD always represents distributed data. In other words, we can say it is a collection of data which is distributed across cluster on different nodes. I think nothing is here to worry about. Everything is crystal and clear. RDD is in-memory collection data set. So we have something special known as RDD in Spark. So obviously that will work on in-memory computation. So once you have initialized RDD and you have divided the data on different nodes or we can say inside cluster. So we cannot change or we cannot modify that particular data. Let's think of a real time scenario where we have lists in Python as so I have one list that is named as a list. The above list also contain data but it is on single node. So it is not distributed on different nodes. We can convert this data into RDD like by splitting it on different nodes across cluster. So if I have this list and I divide 2, 3 on one node. I divide 45, 56 on one node and I divide Ravi Prakash on third node. So it is something we can say now it is a RDD which is getting divided on multiple nodes inside a cluster. So I hope the definition of RDD is crystal clear now. The main purpose of creating RDD is to load the data in distributed fashion and to perform parallel computing. So you can see from the diagram we have an RDD and we have divided that RDD into four nodes and four nodes will work parallelly. And this is the driver node. In case of Hadoop we were saying it as master node. So that was the pictorial description of RDD. Now basic questions about Spark RDD. Is there a default number of RDD partitions? Answer is no. Typically these number of partitions will be equal to the Barker nodes. So if you have one RDD and you just want to know like how many partitions will be created. So it depends on the number of worker nodes. If you have five worker nodes then your RDD will get divided into five partitions. Where does this RDD gets stored? RDD typically is stored in memory of the worker node machines. These RDD will get stored in worker node machines. Okay, there is option to persist them on hard disk. So there is also one more option if you want to persist them on hard disk. So that was all about RDD. Next question arises why RDDs are immutable. Let's suppose if in case you divided data in in a four node cluster okay and then you just made some change in your 
RDD, then obviously you need to sync up with each and every node based on the changes. So that is why RDDs are immutable because we can't sync between multiple nodes if we are making any change in our RDD. Like if you have one RDD and if you have performed two or three operations or transformations and then you are making change in your parent RDD, then obviously there will be no chance to regenerate those previous step if in case any previous step is getting failed. Let's come to the next important topic that is action versus transformations. Many of the interviewer ask this question usually like what is action and what is transformation. So transformation is nothing but it is an operation. Let's suppose we know RDD is the basic data type of SPA. We have an RDD and we are changing the form of RDD from one form to another form or we can say we are just performing any operation on that particular input RDD to create a new RDD. So that is something which we say as a transformation. Transformation usually works on lazy evaluation. We will discuss this topic in detail in upcoming video like how this lazy evaluation work. Just for now you should think of that RDD transformation works on lazy evaluation. So lazy evaluation is something which we say RDD execution will not start until an action is triggered. So let's suppose you have an RDD that is named as RDD1 and you performed 10 operations. Those 10 operate, uh, operations will not get executed until the action is called. So this is something which we say lazy evaluation. Although we are going to discuss this topic in detail in upcoming videos. For, for now just understand if you have performed 10 operations then nothing will happen until the action is called. Action are operations which are applied on an RDD which return a value to the driver program after running a computation. So as I told you if I have performed 10 transformations and then I am performing the action at the time of performing the action all the executions of those transformations will happen. So this is how we say at the time of first transformation at the time of second transformation till 10th transformation it was a process which we say as lazy evaluation it was doing nothing like once you call the action only then my transformation will happen. So this is the example of action versus transformation to understand exactly what action is and what transformation is. So I have taken one data list here in this data list I have some uh, string values and then I am creating the RDD. RDD we can create RDD from list using this function is spark context dot parallelize. So I am just converting this list to RDD then I am performing the transformation. So as I told you transformation works on lazy evaluation. So until an action is called nothing will happen transformation is not going to execute. So if I run this code you can see nothing is nothing is going to happen. But when I call this action RDD 2 dot collect obviously my action will execute that transformation and in real the transformation is going to happen. You can see the particular transformation whatever I was doing to split it the data you can see I am able to see the split data now. So that was all about action versus transformation. So these are some functions which comes under category of transformation and these are some functions which comes under action. So this is lazy evaluation. This is one of the screenshot I took from Google. So lazy evaluation is an evaluation or strategy which delays the evaluation of expression until the value is needed. So it says I know what to do. Wake up me when you really need it. Like when you really need it just initiate the action I will perform all the transformation. Next thing is fault tolerance or resiliency. Although I discuss like what exactly this resiliency is, we are going to discuss this topic in detail. If there is any failure in any node of data processing or in any node of cluster, then the complete job will not be failed. So if in case anyone asks you like what is fault tolerance or what is resilient, why we say RDD is resilient distributed data set. So you just need to say like 
in resilient distributed data set obviously we are going to work with a cluster where there will be multiple nodes if in case there is any failure on any node of the cluster my complete cluster will not fail because of its fault tolerance nature spark has two level of fault tolerance one is from hdfs so as we all know if you are working on spark you you have option to use hdfs as data storage so if you are using hdfs at data storage then obviously the replication factor of hdfs will work i discuss this replication factor in my hadoop video in detail so now also i am going to discuss this in nutshell whenever we store data in hdfs it creates da multiple data blocks and these data blocks according to the replication factor will be replicated on multiple nodes so let's suppose i have one file and i have created five blocks or four blocks of that particular file obviously these four blocks will be assigned to different nodes now according to replication factor if block 1 is getting assigned to data node 1 then there will be one more copy of block 1 on data node 2 and data node 3 so if in case my data node 1 is getting failed my yarn or any resource manager resource manager will transfer the task of block 1 to another data node so this is how this replication factor work so default replication factor in case of hadoop is 3 so if in case you are using hdfs as data storage in case of spark job then obviously you can use this replication factor to resilient your data set second is from rdd so you have one scenario you are not using hdfs as data storage now how this resilient feature will work In Apache Spark the data storage model is based on RDD. RDD provides fault tolerance through lineage graph. So let's understand this beautiful concept what exactly is this lineage graph. A lineage graph keeps a track of transformations to be executed after an action has been called. Like let's suppose you have one RDD that is named as RDD1. and you have performed one transformation that is known as map obviously i told you until an action is called no transformation will gets executed but what it will do it will it will keep track of all the transformations like spark will keep the track of all the transformations so if in case there is any issue with any of the rdd or any of the transformations what it will do let's suppose you have rdd1 and then you applied map transformation you created rdd2 then again you applied filter transformation and now rdd3 is created now if rdd3 is lost then it will check for its parent rdd now what this lineage graph of spark will do it will check for its parent rdd parent rdd means rdd2 it will check with parent rdd2 and it will quickly apply the transformation on rdd2 So here we are talking something like that after rdd3 i am just going to execute my action here once my action is going to execute obviously all the transformation will happen in real but here rdd3 is lost in that case what lineage graph will do lineage graph will will reach to its parent rdd that was rdd2 and then it will quickly apply the transformation here whatever it was it was filter so it will reach to rdd2 then immediately it will perform the filter transformation and immediately it will execute the action so this is how this lineage graph works it keeps the tracks of all the transformations that is going to execute in hdfs we get resiliency fault tolerance by using the replication factor so i discussed this earlier how this replication factor work but in case of rdd whenever we are not using this hdfs as storage part in spark so in that case we get the option for this uh, fault tolerance or resiliency by using the lineage graph so let's suppose we have one rdd1 and we are applying some transformation that is known as map so we have created rdd2 then on rdd2 we are applying one operation or transformation flat map rdd3 and then we are applying one transformation that is filter rdd4 is getting created so if we lose any rdd we can regenerate it by its parent rdd by which process using lineage graph 
if rdd3 fails it gets back to the parent rdd2 and asks it to perform flat map and filter transformation again to generate rdd3 which got failed previously so this was all about the lineage graph and the replication factor which we can say which says rdd is resilient or fault tolerance if there is any failure it will not impact the complete cluster so that was all about the rdd and action versus transformation and fault tolerance feature for spark thank you so much bye bye